Asanteni sana kwa kuwa pamoja nasi kwenye uhusiano wa imani. Obrigado por sintonizar a Conexão da Fé. Gracias por sintonizarnos en la Conexión de Fe. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God. Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Hobbins of the Lewis Avenue Baptist Church in Temperance, Michigan. I want to direct your attention today to Matthew chapter 17. Uh, Matthew is one of the four Gospels, and in Matthew 17, we have a very special uh, event that takes place with Jesus and three of his apostles. And uh, I want you to notice uh, in the passage here, well, in J Matthew 17, verse 1, the Bible says, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. Now, it kind of explains what that means. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Now, transfigured uh, means that they were changed, and uh, Jesus began to, this is not a reflection, but a radiation. He was not uh, reflecting glory, but he was radiating glory from the inside out. And behold, verse 3, there appeared unto them, the three apostles and Jesus, Moses and Elias, talking with him, talking with Jesus. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Now get the scene here. You've got the Jesus, he begins to glow and his, his raiment begins to glow, his clothing. And that shocks the apostles and Peter uh, wasn't sure what to say, so he spoke up. Uh, usually, if you don't know what to say, it's, it's a good idea not to. And, uh, but he begins to, to talk, and God had something special in mind here. On the, what This is called the Mount of Transfiguration. He had something special uh, to teach them, but Peter thought he knew what the purpose of it was, and he was missing the purpose. And uh, verse 5, while he, that's Peter, yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. God the Father speaks. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. I know I would be. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. God redirected their attention back to Jesus, one of his purposes. And uh, sometimes we miss the point. Sometimes uh, the, we, we miss his purpose. And uh, I may use the expression that we miss the point. Uh, when we say that we miss the point or uh, he missed the point, uh, it's an expression that means uh, missing the main focal point or the main purpose. Well, I know I've had times in my life where I have missed the point, where I have missed the purpose of what God is trying to do in my life. He's trying to accomplish something, and I am oblivious. I am uh, in the dark. I, I don't know what he's trying to do, so I make the wrong assumptions. Well, let me ask you this. We have an encounter with Christ here, so what is he trying to accomplish with this encounter? Moses appears. Elijah appears. You've got the three apostles there. The Father speaks. Jesus is glowing. Uh, he's transfigured. What is the purpose? Well, in any encounter with the Lord, I believe there's at least four purposes, and I put them this way. What is the point or, or the purpose? Well, first, the point is to look. We need to look and see Jesus. Uh, we, it gets our eyes off of self. It gets our eyes on him. So when we have an encounter with Jesus, it's important, important for us to, to focus on him. Not only do we look, but we ought to listen. We ought to hear, what are you trying to tell me, Lord? What do you want? I've got my eyes on you. I'm looking. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm listening. But this is a tougher one. We have to let go. We hold on so closely to our purposes and to our thoughts on things, but we have to surrender. We have to let go. And that's what Jesus wanted these men to do. He wanted them to look. He wanted them to listen to what he had to say. And he wanted the, uh, them to let go of their own plans, of their own agenda, of their own ideas, and hear from him. And that's the purpose, to learn. 
We learn from him. We see exactly what he wants. We watch him. We look. We hear what he has to say. We listen. We let go of our own agenda, our own plans, and the result of that is we learn from him what he wants us to do. So what happens when we miss his purpose? It's easy for any of us to miss out on his purpose. And what are the signs of missing his purpose? How do we know we're missing the purpose? When do we know that we're missing his purpose? Well, uh, first of all, we miss his purpose purpose when we assume we have reached a point where we feel invulnerable to missing his purpose. When we feel like we can't, I've arrived, I can't miss his purpose, I've got his purposes figured out, uh, I know exactly what he wants. Well, notice, why would they feel so special? Think about it. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother. Just those three. What about the other nine apostles? No, these fellows were known, they're referred to, they're called the inner circle, the inner three. So uh, it's, it seems that Jesus had even a, a closer relationship with these three for whatever reason. He knows in his wisdom and, and uh, God, excuse me, <coughs> if God gives us a special opportunity of, or somebody else a special uh, position that we don't have, he knows he has his purposes and his plans, but he calls these three his brother, uh, and bringeth them into a high mountain, the Bible says, apart. He separated these three. Don't you think it might be easy for uh, Peter uh, and James and John to feel a little bit like, hey, I've, I've reached a, I've reached a point in life, I've reached a plateau, I've reached a, a level where I've got it, where I've arrived, where I've figured it out. But listen carefully. There is no spiritual checkpoint that we can reach where we become invulnerable, where, it, where we, feel, we, we might feel like we can no longer miss his purpose, but there's no place we can get to in life, no level we can reach to put us to the point where there's no way we could miss his purpose. We can still miss his purposes in our life, but we'll miss his purpose if we get to the point where we feel like uh, we've, we've got it, well, we've reached a plateau, we've, we've reached a level where we can't miss it. Well, that's one of the sure ways to miss exactly what his purpose is. I don't want to miss his purposes in my life. Well, how can I keep from doing that? Well, I need to keep from feeling like I've reached a point. Uh, I've, I've reached a level to where I'll never miss his purposes again. No, as soon as I get to that point, I realize I keep missing his purposes. So it's a matter of what, what this point is. If we summarize this point, it's don't have pride, have humility. Because pride can keep us from seeing his purposes. By the way, I am his child and I am his creation. So with those two things in mind, those two thoughts in mind, it, as, as his creation, he gets to determine what his purpose is. He gets to decide what he wants to teach me, what he wants me to learn. He gets to decide that, not me. So in humility, I want to stay at a place where I realize that he has a purpose for me and I want to ask myself, what, what does he want me? Remember the look, the listen, the let go of my own pride, my own plans, and then I can learn from him. Then I can see what his purpose is. These men very easily uh, could have felt very special. And it's easy to miss the point. Peter missed, missed the purpose here. The purpose was God to focus their attention on Jesus Christ, to tell them about the, some of about the future. That's what they were talking with Jesus. There's a parallel passage to this Matthew chapter that we read. It's also in Mark and Luke. And we'll refer to that a little bit today. But uh, it's easy for us. And those passages, I was going to say, uh, point out that uh, he was there talking with Moses and Elias about the future. God had a purpose. He wanted them to learn, but they missed it. Here's another time that we can miss his purpose. We miss his purpose when we are speaking at a time when we should be listening. Have you ever been there? I have. Uh, there are, I ought to listen. Instead, I speak. And uh, God wants us to listen. In fact, it's, it's Peter interrupting God. Notice here. Uh, it, there appeared in, in Mark 9, I told you I'd refer to a different account here, uh, the parallel passage in Mark 9, verse 4, and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said, Peter starts talking. Uh, he's around the presence of greatness. Um, 
I don't know if you have been around uh, some great people in life before, but if you're around great people or you, you, people that uh, you uh, uh, get to spend a little bit of time with, but you're they're the important one and you're uh, kind of the, the, the one that just kind of blends into the situation, the one in the background. Uh, a very wise principle is to listen. You've got Moses there. You've got Elijah there. If Moses and Elijah and Jesus were standing there talking, I don't think I would like to say anything. I think I just want to sit back and listen and think, wow, this is awesome. But not Peter. Notice the verse again. It says, Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Peter starts speaking. He starts talking at a time when he should be listening. Verse 6 says, for he wist not. That means he knew not. He didn't know what to say, for they were sore afraid. Sometimes being afraid uh, maybe uncomfortable, maybe awkward. Uh, that whole th idea of being afraid makes us say something stupid, makes us say something that we regret later. Peter didn't know what to say, but yet he spoke. He missed the purpose. Uh, and this is Luke's account. Uh, verse 9 says, Peter and uh, they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory. They saw the glory of Jesus and the two men that stood with him. So Peter sees this. We miss his purpose when we are speaking, when we should be listening. I guess the question I'm, I'm asking you is, is God speaking to you? Are you having trouble hearing from God because you won't stop talking? You won't take time to be quiet. The Bible says that we ought to study to be quiet. What a wonderful thing. Some of us have an easier time with being quiet than others. But Peter spoke up here. He, he said something. Listen, if, if God is talking to you, he has a hard time when we won't be quiet. He wants to say something. And sometimes it can be a, a, a spiritual thing where we're saying, God, uh, Father, I need you to do this. And so he says, okay, let me, and we interrupt him. I, I really need this. And here's what I was thinking. And, and I need this or that. And God is, but I want to, and I, he can't talk to us. Why? Because we won't stop talking. Peter missed the purpose that Jesus had for him because he spent time talking instead of listening. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't blame him. <laughs> I think I would have done the same thing. Why? Because fear. Fear makes you do some strange things. And uh, so anyway, he uh, says this to, to, to Jesus. He starts talking and he misses the point. And uh, so, so the next point I want you to see. We miss his purpose, and so many of us do this, when we confuse work for God with worship of God. Did you see what Peter suggested? Uh, he says to the Lord, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. I like the plan. One for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. I understand the plan. But what Peter is suggesting, let us make here three tabernacles. Let's build. It was a time when God wanted them, wanted the apostles, wanted Peter to be able to worship Christ. He's glowing. He's radiating. Mark, Mark's passage says uh, his, he was so white that as no fuller on earth can white them. That's pretty white. And uh, God was glorifying Christ there, and he wanted to see Peter to see that and to worship that, but instead Peter said, let us build. You know, I've found that this is something that I can struggle with at times. I don't have any trouble staying busy for God, of working for God. But if I'm not careful, my work for God, I can look at that as a replacement for my worship of God. God does not mean, want me to work for him instead of worship him. But follow this. He wants me, my, my work for him, he wants me to do. But it's a result of my worship for him. And there's a time for each. Do you spend time with the Lord? I don't mean, are you busy for the Lord? I mean, do you spend time with the Lord? I could ask the same question of some. Uh, do you do anything for the Lord? Do you serve him in any way? Well, I spend time with him and I worship him and that is great. But worship for God 
should result in work for God. And uh, worship of God results in that. Don't confuse the two. I want to have a time, I have a time, a, a time daily where I spend time in God's word. A time daily where I spend time in prayer. But I don't want that to be uh, a, a, a replacement for the work of God because I have times during the day where I'll do, I'm, I'm preaching right now. But this is not the worship of God. I work for God because I love him. And my work for God, my preaching today, my pastoring a church ought to be the result of my worship of God. In fact, the more I, closely I worship God, the more pleasant, the more wonderful, the more fruitful my work for God is. But Peter, Peter thought, well, let's build. It wasn't time to build. It was time to bow. It was time to worship, not work. I want you to see next what happens with Peter here in the passage. We miss his purpose when we are overly impressed with people. Uh, I like the words of that Winston Churchill uh, said, or that's attributed to him. He was referring to somebody and he said, this was a modest man who has much to be modest about. <laughs> uh, what he is saying is uh, the person wasn't very impressive. But notice how impressed Peter is. And, and I'll say this, I would be too. Moses, Elijah, appearing with Jesus. <laughs> that's a pretty good company right there. But it's not that he's caught up with Jesus. Notice. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias. We know that's Elijah talking with him. And Peter said, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, great, and one for Moses and one for Elias. Did you see what Peter did there? Peter elevated Moses and Elijah to the level of Jesus. He was overly impressed with people. You know, I I think there are some people that, that, that are doing a great work for God. The truth of the matter is we may not know who really truly is doing, uh, are, are great Christians, are doing a great work for God until we get to heaven. We, find, we may find out that the person we think is the uh, most uh, meek, humble, quiet Christian it may be doing the greatest work for God. I certainly don't think I'm in a place to judge that. But my point is this. We get our eyes on people. And, and, and understandably, by the way, that's not wrong. Paul said to follow him as he followed Christ. It's not wrong to have your eyes on people. It's wrong to have your eyes on people instead of on God. And as people have their eyes on me as a pastor. But my goal as a pastor is to try to train them to look past me, beyond me, to Christ. And that really ought to be what we're trying to do. But we can be overly impressed with people. You know what the best men are? Men, at best. In other words, the best I have to offer is flesh. So don't be overly impressed with people. Certainly we ought to have a respect for people. But we shouldn't, have, we shouldn't put them on the level of God. Uh, well, if they said it, well, hold on. I don't want the people of the Lewis Avenue Baptist Church where I pastor to do what I say. I want them to do what I say if it is a principle of God's word. Now, I appreciate the respect that they have for me, but no respect for me should ever elevate me to the level of God or God's word. They were, he was overly impressed with Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah were not the purpose that God had. Moses and Elijah were there for Jesus. And Peter was missing that purpose. Why? Well, he was overly impressed with people. In fact, I think he made the same mistake I would have made if I were there. Notice next in the passage, we miss his purpose when we elevate our own will instead of seeking his will. Uh, it, and it's so easy to do. We get our eyes on what we want to do. Notice what Peter did. He said, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and so on. Peter had the plan. Peter came up with the plan. I tell you, let's do this. Uh, I want to uh, build some tabernacles. Wait a second. That was Peter's plan. That was Peter's will. We get in trouble. We miss his purpose when we elevate our own will instead of seeking his. I'm not saying that we elevate our own will instead of elevating his will. We may not know his will. I'm saying we elevate our will instead of seeking his will. Sometimes I don't know what his will is. 
If I want to know what his will is, his, his will, his general will, I may not know specifically to make this decision or that decision, but his will is found right here in his word. This is where he tells us what we are supposed to do. That's his will. I want to seek his will. That's why I spend a daily time in his word so that I can learn his will, so that I can seek his will and I can find out exactly what he wants me to do. When I don't do that, well, that's when I get myself into trouble. I, I should elevate his will I, and, uh, and seek his will above elevating my will. Notice next what Peter does in the next verses. We miss his purpose when God has to interrupt us to get our attention. I've had people do that with me before. I'm talking with someone and uh, they have to interrupt me to get my attention. They're waiting patiently, but I won't stop talking. I won't be quiet. And they have to interrupt me because what they say is so important. And uh, I understand that. Now, you know, God actually had to interrupt Peter. Look at this. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud. While Peter was speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Do you know what God the Father is saying in essence? Peter, be quiet that we're not here to hear you, hear ye him, hear my son, not you, Peter. God had to interrupt Peter. Why? Because Peter was missing his purpose and he had to interrupt him. When, when we miss God's purpose, when, when we are going through life and, and we are, uh, we may not be talking, we may be working for God, we may be busy doing what we think he wants us to do, but we're missing his purpose. We're caught up in our purpose or what we think is his purpose. Peter is not suggesting things to do that are sinful. He's suggesting things to do that he thinks God would want, but they, they weren't the purpose that God wanted. <laughs> so the Heavenly Father has to interrupt him and says, this is my son. <laughs> I'm pleased with him. Peter, stop talking. He said that to me a few times. He didn't have to use the word Peter. I knew he was talking with me. And uh, Steve, stop doing this. This is what I want you to do. God has to interrupt me. I don't like it when he interrupts me. Not because I'm mad he interrupted me. I'm mad at myself for being so dumb that I missed his purpose. But I'd rather God interrupt me and explain his purposes to me and show me his purpose through his word, through his preaching, through, through prayer than for me to get caught up doing something that's not his purpose. One person put it, my, my worry is not failure. My worry is that I will succeed at something that is not worth succeeding at. Boy, I don't want to succeed in life if it's not fulfilling his purpose. And so Father has to interrupt Peter. I want you to notice something else that happens. I, I don't want God to interrupt me. Sometimes he has to. But notice the next point. We miss his purpose. Oh, I feel bad even saying this. I feel like I'm betraying a friend when I'm talking about Peter and James and John here because I'm guilty of the same thing from time to time. We miss his purpose when we are too tired to pray. Notice why Jesus brought him up. It says at the beginning um, in Luke's account, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and J John and James and went up into a mountain. For what? To pray. He took them up there to pray. That was part of his purpose. What did they do? Yeah. <laughs> but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. Have you been there? You feel like you'd have to prop your eyes open with toothpicks and your eyes are so heavy they're snapping those toothpicks. They want to shut. It says, and when they were awake... They saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. They, they woke up and they see his glory. He took them up there to pray and they missed it. Now, I don't mean this to be sacrilegious, but let me say this point here. Sometimes praying is a great way to fall asleep. I'm not saying, well, you shouldn't pray and fall asleep. No, I think that's a great, a great way to fall asleep. I, don't, I think you should have a set time where you're praying that you don't fall asleep. But sometimes when I have a hard time sleeping and I just start talking to the Lord in my mind and my heart talking out to Him, and pretty soon I'm, I'm asleep. That's okay. The Lord understands that. He wouldn't tell us that men ought always to pray and not to faint and, and, and pray without ceasing. Well, if I'm going to pray without ceasing, sometimes that's going to lead me right into my sleeping. And uh, just a thought for you. But 
they fell asleep at a time when Jesus took them there to pray. I'm sure they were busy men. They were fishermen. They did a lot of walking, and, uh, but they were tired. Jesus took them to pray, and, and they, instead of praying, they fell asleep. I've been there. I want to give you one more sign here, one more way that we miss the point. Notice, we miss his purpose when we allow fear to make our decisions. I've done this many times. I've reacted out of fear. I don't mean the kind of fear that a dog chases me, so I run. I don't mean that kind of fear. Uh, I, or or I'm, I'm scared of a dark room or something. I mean, I'm worried about what the results of a decision will be, so I make the wrong decision. Don't let fear make your decisions. Look what Peter did. He said all this, for he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. He allowed fear to make, us, to make his decision for him. You know, uh, when we find that we have made the wrong decision, God will often uh, redirect us. If we missed his purpose, what is God trying to get us to accomplish? Well, he refocuses us. And I want you to see what he refocuses us on. When we've missed his purpose, whatever his purpose is for our life, here's what God does. God redirects our focus back to Christ. Okay, notice, God said, the Father, this is my beloved son. Peter was missing the purpose, am I right? He was saying, uh, the, uh, Jesus was there. Peter starts talking. Let's build a tabernacle, one for the, and God interrupts. What did he do? Did he, did he rebuke Peter? Kind of. <laughs> How did he do it, though? He brought his attention back to Christ. Do you feel like perhaps you've missed his purpose for you? If so, refocus on Christ. Hear ye him. But here's something else. When we've missed his purpose, God redirects our focus off of men. He redirects his purpose back toward, our focus back towards Christ. But he also redirects our focus off of men. Hey, Peter, quit looking at Elijah. Quit looking at Moses. Great men, but they're just men. Get your eyes back on Jesus. And when Peter refocused on Jesus, that is when he got the purpose. He understood the purpose. It's, it's important for us to realize in this situation, in life, that it's easy for us to miss the purpose that God has for us. Do you know God's purpose for your life? I can tell you part of his purpose. He sa the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. He wants to make you a child of God. He wants to be lifted up for us to see him. Knowing that we can go to heaven really is very simple. It's hard to get over a rejection of him perhaps, but we have to understand that we are sinners. Because of our sin, we deserve the wages or the price on sin, according to Romans 6.23. The, the, the wages of sin is death. That's talking about the eternal death. But, in hell, but the gift of God is eternal life. We understand, I'm a sinner, I deserve hell, but Jesus Christ died in my place. He died for me. That's the wages of sin, death. He died in my place. And he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Do you know that? That's God's main purpose for our life, to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God.